Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Natural Health Heart Workshop. I'm Dr. Tabor. I hope everybody's had a great day. And I apologize for being a minute late there. Um, I was trying to post this link inside of our private Facebook group, uh, but it, I, I couldn't get the computer to work that quickly. And so I ended up being a, a minute late. But if you're not in our private Facebook group, uh, all you do is just search a better way community on Facebook. Click the blue button to join and I will add you and I'll be posting the replay uh, in that group for sure. So I'm going to jump right in tonight. Uh, I want you to know there is a chat option below and uh, please say hi. Let me know um, where you're listening from. I love uh, when you guys will um, comment and post and you feel free to, to post questions as we go through here if you have any questions as we go. Um, and then if you're listening in, if you're watching a replay of this, uh, there still will be a chat option, but it will send me a direct email when you place a chat uh, if you're watching the replay. And that way I can reply to it if you have a question. All right. So pretty cool software. I'm going to go ahead and get started here as long as you guys can hear me. Can everybody hear me okay? If you can, let me know. Um, all right. I am going to start a presentation right here. Good deal. You should be able to see my screen with my slides here. And uh, uh, again, I'm Dr. Tabor Smith. I've been a chiropractor. It says 12 plus years on this slide, actually 13 years and going now. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why I'm passionate about heart health is my family. And I know many of you as well, your family members have had issues with um, heart health. My mom passed away from a massive heart attack. She was only 47 years old. At the time, she was taking 21 prescription medications, and that's where it hit me. That was what started my journey into natural health was that, you know, sometimes you need medication. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I, sometimes it's necessary, but that's not where real health comes from. And if the person who took the most medication was the healthiest, well, my mom would have been one of the healthiest people on the planet, and obviously that wasn't the case. So uh, Melissa says... Hi from Barry and Becky in in low oh, yeah 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 in New Mexico, awesome. In a, she's at a Bible study. Well, great. That's a good place to be. Thanks for being on, Melissa. Appreciate it. Oh, never mind. Not Melissa. I got it. NM. Something. I'm from New Mexico, so NM sometimes stands for New Mexico for me. For me. Uh, hi from Texas. Great, great, great state of Texas. Love it. Well, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Um. Yeah, so I had a brother that uh, you know I never knew. He was an older brother, but he passed away at the age of just three days old from some type of heart condition. My son was born with a cardiac heart de uh, defect, uh, and he had to have heart surgery at the age of one. And my father-in-law had some heart issues, and so this type of stuff runs in the family, but that's what motivated me to learn natural heart health so I could start taking care of my family, and I joined the... Uh, Cardiac Health Institute, the Cardiovascular Health Institute with um, uh, Dr. Jack Wolfson. And you'll hear me talk a lot about Dr. Jack Wolfson because he's just uh, such a great mentor and coach of mine. I do training with him every month to learn about natural heart health. He is um, a board certified cardiologist. He has 10 years of medical training, senior partner in Arizona's largest cardiology group, chair of medicine, director of cardiac rehab, uh, he was one of the Phoenix top docs, the Doctors Wolfson and Wolfson Integrative Cardiology, top holistic MD, uh, Dr. Axe, top 50 functional medicine doctors, and he speaks around the world. He actually has a book, and you're going to see me promote a lot of his stuff on here just because I believe in him so much. If you have heart health issues, you know, you should follow Dr. Jack Wolfson. And uh, he has a best selling book called The Paleo Cardiologist, which is a great book. All right, so um, before we jump in, I actually want to share a video um, of Dr. Wolfson uh, and uh, one that he made for us here. And so I'm going to show this video real quick. Here you go. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer worldwide. I should know I'm cardiologist Dr. Jack Wolfson, and I'm a board certified cardiologist and author of the Amazon bestseller, The Paleo Cardiologist. I've been in practice for over 20 years, installing pacemakers, angiograms. Now I practice holistically. I wrote a book, The Paleo Cardiologist, and Dr. Tabor Smith 
has been a student of my work and he's a brilliant, brilliant physician, an excellent chiropractor, and he is perfect to help guide you on holistic heart health. So I hope you attend his session on holistic heart health. He's going to be bringing some fantastic information about the cause of cardiovascular disease without going after things with pharmaceuticals, dangerous surgeries, dangerous procedures. Listen to Dr. Tabor Smith first. I'm sure you're going to love the presentation. All the references, all the science is there, and we look forward to you attending this presentation. Thank you. All right. So, uh, oops, uh, my slides fell off here. Let me go back to them. Great guy, great doctor, and uh, all about natural health. His wife is actually a, a chiropractor, and so that's what makes him such a great cardiologist, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, cardiovascular disease, uh, although I joke around sometimes, cardiovascular disease is a very, very uh, serious um, subject. Appro approximately 1.5 million heart attacks and strokes occur every year. More than 800,000 people die from cardiovascular disease each year. That's one in every three deaths is um, pertains to cardiovascular disease. Tens of millions of Americans take pharmaceuticals for high blood pressure. And pharma has side effects, which we'll talk about. Limited effectiveness, and they don't address the cause of high blood pressure. Um, this giant pandemic that we just went through, hopefully we're through, um, the, it says there's emerging, uh, emerging data from various countries that most affected, the person who was most affected by coronavirus in 2019 was hypertension. It was the most strongly associated poor clinical outcomes. So if you're going to have problems, if you get COVID and you're going to have problems, more people with high blood pressure had issues and health problems with COVID-19 than any um, than anybody else. It is the single highest risk factor of infection was hypertension. So it's, it, it's important for us to, um, to get this under control, right? So here's what we're going to cover tonight. Number one, how high blood pressure can lead to heart attack, stroke, and more. Number two, the best diet to improve your, your blood pressure. Number three, we'll talk about lifestyle changes uh, to get your blood pressure under control, the tests that you may, you may need to undercover problems and issues, and the best supplements to maintain healthy blood pressure. Um, just a little disclaimer I have to say here is this presentation is meant for informational purposes only. This is the content is solely op the, the opinion of Dr. Tabor Smith. Um, the presentation is not meant to diagnose, prevent disease or cure any disease. Please speak with your healthcare provider regarding any changes in your healthcare plan. All right, let's jump in. What is blood pressure? It's the force of blood against arterial walls and they measure that force. It's recorded as two numbers, systolic over diastolic. All right. So you've probably heard of 120 over 80. That's kind of the quote unquote normal that we hear all the time. 120 over 80. That 120 is the systolic number and 80 would be the diastolic pressure. And what that is, by the way, uh, systolic is the pressure in the arteries when the heart contracts. Like, so every beat when the heart contracts, the pressure that's there uh, is would be 120 millimeters of mercury. When the heart relaxes after the beat, that's the diastolic pressure. And so the pressure without the contraction of the heart would, would be less than the pressure with the contraction. Does that make sense? So it's contraction over relaxation. And those are the pressures that it's measuring. So what's normal? What's abnormal? Again, normal, we kind of talk about 120 over 80. There's a pre-hypertension stage, and that would be if your systolic is 120 to 139 and your diastolic is 80 to 89. Um, the hypertension stage one and then hypertension stage two. Of course, they're going to probably medicate you like if a, a typical medical doctor would medicate you in pre-hypertension. I've seen them medicate almost normal. Uh, but certainly in prehypertension, they're probably going to give you some meds. Um, now I've heard Dr. Wolfson say specifically in some of our trainings, he's a board certified cardiologist. Again, let me remind you. Uh, and he doesn't, he tries not to give his patients medications until if, unless they're in maybe the emergency type phase down there at the bottom. And then you really do need to step in and, and, uh, get that down. But the problem with blood pressure is not the immediate acute issue. Most of the time, just because my heart, my blood pressure goes up to like 130 or 140 in the, over 
90 or 100, just because it stays high for a little bit doesn't really matter. Where it, where it does you know, play a major role and start to de- damage your body is when it, you have high blood pressure over a long period of time. Now, don't get me wrong. There are emergency type levels where we have we need to get those down immediately. That could be dangerous in the short term. But most high blood pressure, especially if it's just in stage one or stage two hypertension levels, the the issue is long term problems, right? So stroke, heart attack, blindness, heart failure, kidney failure. Those type of things happen over decades of having high blood pressure. Fifty million Americans have hypertension. of children have hypertension, which is really sad. 16% of children have pre-hypertension. And unfortunately, most of those cases are lifestyle-related hypertension. The estimated cost for treating hypertension and related diseases was $156 billion in the United States, and that was back in 2011. And I thought this was interesting. This is a slide um, that uh, came off a study that was published in, uh, from 1999 to 2002, and they were looking at different races. And so all persons, uh, white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, and Mexican-American, and they do show that black, non-Hispanic actually have higher rates of um high blood pressure. And one of the theories that Dr. Wolfson talks about is that, uh, you know, the sun, the sun lowers our blood pressure. It's really healthy to get out into the sun. And the darker your skin is, the less absorption of the sun that you get. So um, that may be a possible factor. Uh, The cause of high blood pressure is definitely not a lack of medication. All right. So you don't have a lack of angiotensin you know, receptors, uh, drugs in your body. That's not the cause, right? And we're going to talk about what is the cause. Um, Here's a study that shows the more you weigh, the higher chance of you having hypertension. And did you know, by the way, why would my weight be related to high blood pressure? Well, your your body has um, capillaries. I don't know if you've ever heard of capillaries, but basically your heart, it it pumps blood through arteries. Those big arteries branch into very small arteries, right? So smaller, 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 until they get to like the surface of your skin. And in the surface of your skin, you have these capillaries and capillaries are blood vessels that are so small that red blood cells actually have to line up to go through them. So they have to line up one by one to send red blood vessels through those capillaries. And did you know that every extra pound of fat that you have on your body, it equals one mile of capillaries that your heart has to pump blood through. So think about that. If I have five extra pounds of fat, I'm pushing, my heart has to push blood through five miles of capillaries. If I have 25 extra pounds of fat, my heart has to push blood through 25 miles of capillaries. So it needs more pressure to get blood into certain areas. That might be one reason uh, or one cause of high blood pressure. I thought this was interesting and it shows just how doing natural things and getting back to the nat, uh, you know, the way God created, uh, nature it actually helps. So does breastfeeding in infancy, lower blood pressure in childhood. And this was a long-term study. And they showed that if you breastfed, when you were a kid, you were less likely to have, uh, blood pressure issues later. All right. So here's the big question. If you if you're given a medication to lower your blood pressure, we need to ask this question: Does that medication lower the risk of your heart attack, of you having heart failure, or you having stroke, or even death? Right. So, does the pharma that 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 we're given actually lower our chances of death, or does it just lower our blood pressure? Well, here's a. Uh, um, uh, excuse me, an advertisement, right? By a blood pressure medication. And if you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, it says 50% to 81% of patients on Micardis um, reach their blood pressure goals. So it doesn't say anything about it lower, you know, increasing your lifespan or lowering your chances of heart attack. Like all it does is get your blood pressure down. And the people who took it achieved their blood pressure goals. Because here's a study that shows Big Pharma doesn't actually save lives. They took uh, people who had high blood pressure and they split them up into two groups. And they put one group on ACE inhibitors, which is a type of blood pressure medication. They put the other group on angiotensin receptor blockers, which is another type of blood pressure medication. And they had a control group, all right? So the control group didn't get any medication. They had high blood pressure, but they didn't get any medication. 
When summarized, there was no significant difference in all-cause mortality. So in other words, there were no differences between lifespan of the people who took the drugs or the people who didn't. Now, the blood pressure was different. People who had high blood pressure and took the drug, their blood pressure was lower, but it didn't translate to less heart attacks or longer life. It just meant they were taking a drug and it was lowering their blood pressure. So it's important that we understand what's going on and uh, what we see a lot of times are the, the blood pressure medications aren't really extending lifespan and they're causing a lot of other issues and side effects. So um, this, this is a study, does angiotensin receptor blockers cause cancer? Cancer rates were increased by 1.2% when a person was taking an angiotensin receptor blocker. Uh, this is a lawyer's advertisement for Benicar. And did you have side effects? Have you taken Benicar and suffered intestinal problems? And so Benicar is another, um, another name for Benicar is Omisartan. So it says severe sprue-like enteriopathies, that's digestive issues associated with Omisartan. And if you had that, now the lawyers come back and say, oh, let's sue and, um, you know, all of these different side effects from the medications that you were taking, right? Uh, Captopril. This study suggests that treating heart failure patients with ACE inhibitors may result in zinc deficiency. In fact, a lot of medications cause nutritional deficiencies and they, they lead to other issues and problems. I thought this, this, um, uh, little meme here was funny. It will cure every ailment known to man. The only side effect is you'll choke to death trying to swallow it. So common hypertension drugs, um, th this one here, these are hard to mention, so forgive me if I butcher the words, but uh, th uh, thiazide, diuretics, cause kidneys to increase urine, removing excess fluid from blood vessels, diuretics, or water pills have minimal side effects. And my mom was taking diuretics because she had heart disease. She had kidney failure. And I remember her being so thirsty and just wanting to drink because that's what diuretics do. They pull all the, the fluid off of you. And she would just, I mean, her lips and, and her mouth would just water when somebody was taking a drink of something because she was so thirsty. But they were telling her, don't drink. Just take your diuretics, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so these, these drugs cause people to lose sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and other micronutrients. Beta blockers make the heart beat slower by blocking nerve stimulating hormones. They've been used for 40 years for high blood pressure, angina, migraines, and anxiety. They cause fatigue, uh, lethargy, erectile dysfunction, elevated blood sugar. ACE inhibitors, another common one, ex uh, expand blood vessels by blocking certain hormones. ACE inhibitors are linked to uh, substantially more strokes compared to diuretics. Uh, they're famous for causing a cough that won't go away. Angiotensin II antagonists work like ACE inhibitors, but with fewer major side effects. Um, they've been shown to increase your risk of cancer. Alpha blockers, light headaches and dizziness have been caused from alpha blockers. And calcium channel blockers lead to depression and have actually shown increased rates of suicides from people who are taking calcium channel blockers. But guys, here's the issue. I'm not going to, you know, tell you what to take. I'll never tell you to take something or not to take something. I just want to give you the information so you can decide for yourself. But I'll tell you, look, the, the cause is the cure. And that's, that's the issue. Let's it, just by taking a medication, we're not addressing what caused the high blood pressure. We're basically covering up that issue. We're covering up that symptom and never really addressing the cause. When we start looking at saying, well, what causes high blood pressure? And we remove that cause, then it goes away and your body's able to heal and function the way it was designed to heal and function in the first place. So how do we find the cause of hypertension? And I'm going to list a few things here that we're going to go through. And you might see this list and think that it's elementary. You might think that, oh, well, you know, that's so simple. That can't be it. But the way God designed the body, it, it needs certain nutrients. It, and it was designed in a certain way. And when we stop working against the design of the body and trying to change it with chemicals and we start working with that design in the body, it begins to function better. And you'd be amazed at how your body begins to regulate things like blood pressure. So here are some of the things we're finding that can cause high blood pressure, sleep issues, not getting sunshine, uh, food and beverage issues, which we'll talk about, environmental toxins, excess stress, 
not having enough physical activity and subluxation. So we're going to dive into these as we go. Number one is sleep. And it's number one because it might be the most important. Um, sleep is not an option. And in fact, not sleeping directly can increase your high blood pressure. So if you're not sleeping well, you're not sleeping much, that could absolutely be the reason you have high blood pressure. So how do you improve your sleep? Well, first of all, I, in, in my opinion, we should all earn our sleep. All right. So it's not just because we were awake all day means we're going to sleep good at night. No, we have to get out there and exercise, work hard, wear ourselves down so that when our head hits the pillow, boom, we're out. That's how you have a good night's sleep. Number two, you strengthen your natural circadian rhythm. So God created us, you know, back in, thousands of years ago when before we had all these artificial lights and electricity and cell phones and computers, guess what? We woke up with the sun and we went to bed with the sun. And over thousands of years, we were, we grew and we, um, you know, I don't want to say evolved, but we, we adapted and we, we, um, we grew as a, as a society like learning and, and seeing the sun go down and the sun come up. And so our body was designed to have this thing called a circadian rhythm. So if we start actually, literally, if you start watching sunsets, turning your lights off after sundown, and you turn all technology off after sundown, you'll start sleeping a lot better. Trust me, I've done it. Number three, we, it goes back to technology again. A lot of us stare at our phone while we're even laying in bed. So your circadian rhythm has no idea what's going on. Your body doesn't know if it should secrete serotonin, melatonin, adrenaline. It, and we, then we read all these stories uh, that, or, or the news that fires up adrenaline and we're staring at a, at a bright screen. No wonder we can't fall asleep at night. Um, and then the last thing I, I want to tell you that will help you sleep better is your spinal molding rolls. Hopefully, especially if you're a patient in our office, you have spinal molding rolls. If you see my picture down there in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm holding a, a little picture of, of somebody laying on spinal molding rolls. Lay on these rolls before you go to sleep, and it'll help your spine stay in a better alignment uh, as you sleep, and that will help you get a much better night's sleep as well. Now, I already know what you're going to say. I'm going to get people coming back at me and saying, hey, I can't turn the screens off at night. Maybe you even work at night, and you have to be in front of the computer. I get it. Well, this is a great option, blue blockers, and uh, these are, are – uh, uh, sunglasses that you can get on Amazon. You can get them anywhere. Uh, just Google it. But protective uh, blue blockers have are, are kind of a um, protection that shields against the type of, of light that will affect your circadian rhythms. So check that out. Blue blockers increase melatonin and improve sleep. And you would put these um, sunglasses or whatever you want to call them, blue blocker glasses on at night if you're going to be in front of a screen after the sun goes down. Um, alcohol doesn't does not help you deep sleep. It might help you fall asleep, um, but you actually end up sleeping worse and not getting into a deep rhythmic sleep. Um, and uh, yeah, so your body doesn't get to regenerate. Sleeping pills don't help you either. You might go to sleep again, and you might sleep through the night if you're taking a sleeping pill, but they actually uh, keep you from getting into RE REM sleep, which helps you get that really good regenerative sleep. So it, those those two things aren't even an option for sleep, all right? Sleep restriction has been shown to raise high blood pressure and heart rate, period. If you're not getting good sleep, that's, that is directly causing your high blood pressure and, your, and, and it also will increase your heart rate. Insufficient sleep can raise av um, average 24-hour blood pressure to lead to structural adaptations that entrain the cardiovascular system to operate and elevated blood pressure. Uh, disruptions in the timing and durations of sleep could also disrupt circadian rhythms and autonomic balance. Short sleep duration has been found to be associated with higher blood pressure and hypertension in both cross-sectional and longitudinal epilogical studies. All right. So there, and, and by the way, these little squares, these white squares with all this jargon here, those are studies. And so if you screen capture, you know, this, or you write down, that's a bibliography and reference to a study of what I'm saying here on the slide. Just so you know. All right. When you're not getting enough sleep, your body will compensate for it. Adrenaline will be released. Catecholamines surge. 
epinephrine, norepinephrine. These are hormones that keep you awake. They're released, and this causes blood vessels to clamp down. Okay, that increases, you shoot, makes your blood vessels shoot through the roof. Uh, your your blood pressure. This will cause more cravings of carbohydrates and sugar and alcohol. So you'll start looking for things like ice cream and cookies and soda pops at night, right? You usually don't crave broccoli in the middle of the night, right? When you wake up and you go to the fridge, you're not looking for that big um, head of lettuce, right? You're looking for something that you're craving like sugar. So you're, you're not sleeping will cause a drop in melatonin, which helps um, nor melatonin actually helps normalize your blood pressure. So you want to sleep well so that it does that. Right. Uh, this is a quote from Dr. Jack Wolfson right here. I had to take a quote from it because I thought it was so great. I think he says, I think sleep is one of the most important things to overall health and wellness before there was man in whatever version that you want to look at biblical or evolutionary. The, f the first there was dark, then there was life. Life began to populate within this light, dark, light, dark rhythm. All right. So sleep. Here's another study that says improved sleep quality improves blood pressure control among patients with chronic kidney disease. Um, this is interesting. This uh, this used to be called, if you've ever heard of sleep apnea, uh, the Pickwickian syndrome. It's obstructive sleep ap apnea, and it was called the Pickwickian syndrome in the past because we didn't really know what it was. But um, Joe the Fat Boy, who was described by Charles Dickens in the Pickwickian papers, had the typical features like snoring, obesity, and sleep sleeplessness. And they realized that he was describing uh, sleep apnea, but they didn't even know that's what it was back then. So if you think you have an issue, you, um, you know, if you wake up during the night, if you wake up and try to like, catch your breath, you might have sleep apnea. It might be something that you want to get checked for. Sleep apnea leads to adrenaline release, catecholamine surges, epinephrine, norepinephrine are released, and this causes those blood vessels to clamp down. Again, that's high blood pressure. Breathing helps with circulation. Uh, if you stop breathing, you stop circulating that blood and that affects your blood pressure. All right. Um, melatonin, great thing. Yes, you can supplement melatonin. You can get melatonin supplements. I don't really recommend supplementing melatonin. I recommend you getting your sleep rhythm regular so that your body secretes melatonin naturally. It's what it was designed to do. If you want to try some supplementations of melatonin, you can, but supplementing something is never as good as the body, letting the body actually produce it. Uh, but melatonin has been shown to lower blood pressure, decrease platelet ag aggregation, reduces serum catecholamines, reduces the risk of um, uh, just dysfunction, strokes, those types of issues. All right. Sun. All right. So we talked about um, sleep. That's a major cause of high blood pressure. Not getting enough sun is a major cause of high blood pressure as well. There's me sport, not sporting a shirt, walking around our neighborhood and getting some sun. I do that in the summer, but I also try to do that in the winter as well. And here's what happens. Getting sun is not comparable to just taking vitamin D3 supplements, okay? I know everybody just wants to take vitamin D and not worry about going for a walk or not worry about getting the sun. No, no, I take vitamin D, but you don't understand. You get way more benefits from actual sunlight, you get vitamin D and a lot more other things from the actual sunlight than you do just from taking vitamin D. And this is how it works. The sun comes down, it hits your skin and it converts 7 DHC to vitamin D. All right. Yes, you can get vitamin D in your diet as well if you supplement it, but that helps circulation and um, interior issues. So it helps issues in the, in the blood system and lowers your, your, uh, blood pressure. Sun comes in, it hits the skin. It turns nitrates that are in your skin into what we call nitrous oxide or NO nitrous oxide causes vasodilation of the blood vessels. And that lowers your blood pressure that a lot of, uh, bodybuilders or, um, people who go to the gym, they'll mix a pre-workout drink. And a lot of time that pre-workout drink has nitrous oxide in it because they want their blood vessels to open up so they can pump more blood to the muscles, right? Well, that lowers your blood, your blood pressure when nitrous oxide is in the body. So that's a great thing. There's a lot of nitrous oxide in beets, by the way. So if you eat a lot of beets or if you get a beet powder, that can be really good and healthy for, and lower blood pressure also. Uh, here's some studies 
associations of blood pressure, sunlight, and vitamin D in community dwelling adults. Uh, conclusion, we conclude that all 25 OHD, so that's vitamin D, concentration is inversely associated with systolic blood pressure. It did not explain the association of greater sunlight exposure with lower blood pressure. Okay, so what they're saying is that sunlight compared to vitamin D, they had two groups, one group that actually got sunlight and one group that just took a vitamin D supplement. And the sunlight group had so many more benefits than just the person who was taking vitamin D, all right? Avoidance of sun exposure is a risk factor for all cause mortality. So li literally you're more likely to die, period, if you avoid sun exposure. I thought that's interesting. Um, oh, and by the way, this is the results from the melanoma in Southern Sweden cohort. What that means is I have a lot of people that are like, you have to be super careful out in the sun because it'll cause skin cancer. And yes, by the way, let me, let me, I should have said this already. When I say get some sun, I don't mean stay out in the sun all day and get sunburned. Okay. Here's, here's a, a good kind of synopsis. Sunburn is bad. I do not want you to get sunburned, but sun is good. Okay. So just getting out there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If you've been getting out and you have tanned a little bit, you could probably stay out longer than that, but I'm not saying go outside and stay out in the sun all day and sunburn. That is not good. That is dangerous. But even these people in this study who had skin cancer, they had melanoma, even the people with melanoma in the past, if they avoided the sun, they had a lower lifespan. So even if they had melanoma, but they still got some sun, they, they lived longer, okay? So it's all about living longer. Sun is important. Nutrition. Let's talk about nutrition. Why are there a hundred different diets coming out every year, right? We never know what we're supposed to eat. There's something wrong with the human race. Um, we don't have to tell a lion what to eat, right? It doesn't have to go on a gazelle diet. It knows what to eat. You don't have to teach a cow to eat grass. Like it just happens. It was designed to be that way. You don't have to teach a squirrel to eat acorns. We should eat what we are designed to eat. And right now, most Americans are not eating food that God designed us to eat. And so it's causing problems and it's causing nutritional deficiencies. And that's why um, I'm a big proponent and so is Dr. Wolfson of the paleo diet, all right? And what all that means is basically if you go back a few thousand years before we had heart disease, before we had cancer, and yes, I know lifespans weren't as long back then, but mostly it was because they fell off a cliff you know what I mean? Or they, they didn't have antibiotics. So they got, you know, they got a cut on their foot and they died. Right. It was, it was that, um, they didn't have technology that we have today, but none of them were dying of heart disease or cancer. And in fact, some, some populations we're finding actually lived a really long time. So paleo just refers to what we ate back when we were eating what we were designed to eat. All right. Um, metabolic and, um, uh, physiologic improvements from consuming paleolithic hunter-gathering diets. And so hunter-gatherer diet is the diet we were designed to eat, um, paleo diet. Now, one of the the healthiest foods on the planet uh, that, uh, and I got this again from Dr. Wolfson, that the healthiest food on the planet is a whole fish, a sardine. Um, and the reason is, is it has everything in it to sustain life, including bones, including the brain, including the everything that is needed to sustain life. So you're putting that entire organism inside your body, all the nutrients that it has is nurturing your body. Now, I don't eat sardines. I do eat the second healthiest thing on the planet though, which is another thing we were lied to. Big food type promotions back in the 70s and 80s told us that eggs cause high cholesterol. Absolutely not true. Dr. Wolfson, board certified cardiologist, says eggs are the second healthiest food that you could possibly eat. In fact, Dr. Wolfson calls eggs nature's multivitamin. And think about it eggs have everything in it that's needed to sustain life. That, that's what an egg is, right? Even if you go back thousands of years ago to even before humans were on this planet and think about what did dinosaurs eat? Like what was a precious trophy that a dinosaur could get and it's raid another dinosaur's nest and eat the eggs. So eggs have been nourishing us for thousands of years. It just makes sense that they're healthy for you. Uh, fish row, which is coming in three and basically that's the eggs of fish. So I, I assume that would be very healthy as well. Um, 
sulfur deficiency causes high blood pressure. So things like garlic, onion, eggs, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, those have a lot of sulfur in it and can be shown to lower blood pressure. Also a great a great source of sulfur is Pellegrino water. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's a great source of water. And you can just drink out of a glass bottle, which is a lot more healthier than plastic using Pellegrino water. Um, there's a, the study that's on that slide there, potential of garlic in lowering high blood pressure, mechanisms of action and clinical relevance. So they showed if you supplement, take garlic every day, uh, or even put it in your diet, man, you know, all those spices, dump them in your food. Um, it, it's really, really good for your body. Look at this, a study right here, red meat, poultry, and egg consumption with the risk of hypertension, a meta-analysis perspective cohort study. This was published in 2018. They showed that egg eaters have a 21% lower risk of high blood pressure. Organic. We definitely want to eat organic. And I always tell people, if you have a choice between, well, uh, I just try to eat organic meats and organic vegetables. I was going to say organic meats is probably more important than organic vegetables <clears throat> just because, uh, you know, all of the, they inject them with antibiotics and, and steroids and all kinds of stuff now. So meats are definitely important that we want to get organic, but so are vegetables. Excuse me one second. Let me cough. <clears throat> vegetables are very important to get organic nowadays because of all the pesticides that they use. One of them called glyphosate is actually been shown to be a direct cause of hypertension. So if you're sitting there, even if you have, you're doing all these things, you're sleeping, you're getting sun, you're getting adjusted chiropractic, you're getting, you're exercising, but you're eating vegetables that are, you know, that have been sprayed with pesticides and have glyphosate all over them, that literally is going to directly cause high blood pressure. Uh, is glycine effective against elevated blood pressure? Yeah. All right. Uh, sodium restriction lowers blood pressure by six over four. And by the, by the way, when you hear me say something like six over four, that just means it lowers your top number, the, the systolic number by six and the bottom number, the diastolic number by four. Now, this one I do have to give to the medical doctors because they've been preaching for a long time, you know, stay away from salt. It'll help lower your blood pressure. I don't think that you have to go on so strict that you can't eat anything that has salt in it, but just don't add extra stuff. Look at packages, make sure they haven't added a lot of salts and nitrates already. Um, but yeah, salt can definitely increase your blood pressure and just restricting your salt and going on a lower sodium uh, diet can lower your blood pressure. All right. Uh, they do say that caffeine could raise the blood pressure. Again, I think if you're trying, you're, you're drinking maybe some organic coffee or, or just enjoying yourself and relaxing as you drink coffee, shouldn't be a big deal. You might get a point or two if you're really trying to bring it down and you, you stop drinking coffee. Here's the big one though. 8% increase in hypertension for, ever, for every sugary drink that you drink. For every sugary sweetened beverage, that's an 8% increase in hypertension. That's a study that was published in 2015. Uh, there are some alternatives, some natural, um, some uh, things that you can take if you're, if you're on an ACE inhibitor. You can use some different types of spices or supplements like green tea, uh, cacao, black cumin seed, which is absolutely great. Uh, if you're taking an angiotensin receptor blocker, you could try to start using some ginger, brown rice, peach. Uh, these, these are all come straight from Dr. Wolfson. In fact, this is such a big slide. You know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to give you these slides. All right. So I press share here. There should be a link that pops up that has a download. If you, if you push the link that popped up, it should open in a new page. It shouldn't kick you off the webinar, but you can have the slides so that you don't have to write all this down real quick. Uh, those blood pressure workshops, workshop slides are yours. I will also post those slides in our private Facebook group when we're done here as well. All right. Black cumin seeds, as I said, this is a great one. These are little black seeds. You can use a coffee grinder to grind them up, put them in your smoothies. Um, oral administration, so basically eating black cumin seeds um, twice a day for eight weeks was shown to be effective at significantly lowering both blood pressure, um, systolic and diastolic. In other randomized trial, one teaspoon of black cumin seed was shown to decrease blood pressure by 8%. Uh, 
um, and or systolic blood pressure by 8% and diastolic blood pressure by 12%. And let's see, black cumin seeds contain various volatile oils, including uh, thymol, a uh, lot of other words that are hard to say. Basically, those oils help to decrease blood pressure. Get a, um, studies suggest that black cumin seed decreases blood pressure by reducing the activity of ACE and increasing the activity of heme oxygenase 1. I'm sure you guys really wanted to know that, but basically, black cumin seed helps. All right? It's good stuff. Uh, gut flora is important. We have to have good flora in the gut. Uh, so taking a, a probiotic might, might help. Um, what that does is bacteria in our gut break down protein into ACE inhibitory peptides. So we talk about ACE inhibitors is a drug that they give you to lower your blood pressure. Well, people with good gut flora, like if you're taking a good probiotic, and then you use a protein base, like even whey protein, try to get a good clean whey protein that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, but you take, make a smoothie, put the black cumin seed in there, put a lot of other good healthy berries and, and stuff in there and have a smoothie and drink that. And your the good bacteria in your gut will break down the protein into ACE inhib inhibitory peptides. And that can literally lower your blood pressure right there as well. And then let's talk about environmental toxins. This is another cause of high blood pressure. We need to heal our environment. I mean, look at that picture. Like, look at all the smog. That's not Houston, but I'm sure Houston looks pretty similar to that. Um, there's a lot of toxins in the air. That's why a good um, air filter is great to have in your home. Clearing the air to treat hypertension, so you're clearing those toxins before you have to breathe them in. Air pollution rises, the risk of hypertension rises. So the risk of high blood pressure when you have uh, toxic air, and that's a study right here. Air pollution and emergency department visits for high blood pressure in Edmonton and Calgary, Canada, a case crossover study. Indoor quality of air. You don't think about this a lot, but inside your house usually is worse quality of air than outside. 90% of our lives are spent indoors and more pollution are indoors. Two to five times more pollution are indoors than outdoors. And that's why it's good to have a good air filter. Um, and this is interesting. Eating fish can protect you from air pollutants. This was a cardiovascular study. Uh, benefits of taking a fish oil supplement. So you could eat fish or you could take a fish oil supplement against fine particle air, air pollution in China. And basically uh, they took, they had people who took 2.5 grams of fish oil versus people who didn't. And they showed people who took fish oil supplement, their bodies process the chemicals better and uh, are, you know, expelled toxins better than people who didn't take fish oil supplement. And I think fish oil is super healthy for you. Everybody really should be on it. Now, this is the air filter that Dr. Wolfson, the cardiologist, recommends. You can go to his website website to get it. And like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna promote a lot of his products. I don't get a dime for it. Uh, but if you go to the doctorswolfson.com, he has great products on there. And that's V and then DRS Wolfson.com. Um, mental health, highly important. All right. Stress causes high blood pressure, period. There's no you know, there's no question. Associations between mental disorders and subsequent onset of high blood pressure, they're directly related. So we have to be able to relax, massage therapy, getting adjusted, um, you know, just sitting down and relaxing with a nice book and some green tea, whatever it is that you need to relax will definitely decrease your blood pressure. What fits your busy schedule better, exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? I'll take the exercise one hour a day. In fact, studies show that exercise can significantly lower your blood pressure. 11 over 8 was the average. So lowers the systolic by 11, lowers the diastolic by 8. And I think a lot of that was cardiovascular exercise that they're doing, right? Like running on a treadmill, um, elliptical, bike, or even just if, if all you can do is go for a walk, that's virtually uh, cardiovascular exercise. And especially if it's out outside um, getting some sunlight, you're, you're getting a double whammy there, right? Um, te techniques to, to boost parasympathetic tone. Now, let me explain what parasympathetic is. You see these, uh, these little models I have behind me. This is, this is the spine right here. Okay, hopefully this is not your spine. This one has all kinds of arthritis. Um, but... Uh, your nervous system, which consists of your brain, your spinal cord, and all your nerves, it, it can be broken up into two parts. The parasympathetic, which is also called the rest and digest part of your 
nervous system. And it can be broken up into the sympathetic, which is also called your fight or flight system. Now, you probably already heard this before. You may have just not heard it called parasympathetic versus sympathetic. But rest and digest versus fight or flight. Um, for an example, if I come across a, you know, a, a wild cougar, right? And that cougar wants to eat me for lunch. Well, my body's going to go into fight or flight mode. Adrenaline's going to be pumping. My eyes are going to dilate. I'm going to get ready to either fight that, that kitty cat or I'm going to get the heck out of there. I'm going to run, right? So when our sympathetic part of our nervous system or our fight or flight part of our nervous system is being activated constantly, stress activates it. Um, not sleeping activates your fight or flight nervous system. Uh, you know, poor diet, you know, those types of things that they, they activate that fight or flight nervous system. So we can't sleep when the fight or flight nervous system is activated, our blood pressure goes up. And so what we want to learn is techniques to get us out of the sympathetic into the parasympathetic into the rest and digest. Um, number one, gargling actually de uh, gets you into parasympathetic. Singing or humming puts you. That's why you know some people meditate and they hum. Well, humming actually gets you into a rest and digest, um, calming state. Uh, cold water plunge. I'm sure a lot of you are going to go do this, right? Go jump in a really, really cold water or get a ice bath and go jump in there. But it does get you into parasympathetic tone. Uh, abdominal massage they have apparently. Uh, chiropractic. Getting chiropractic adjustments can put your body into parasympathetic tone. That's why some studies show a chiropractic adjustment can lower your blood pressure better than two blood pressure medications put together. All right. Uh, body work like massage, etc., acupuncture, uh, boosting nitrous oxide. So taking eating uh, beets or a beet powder or even just a nitrous oxide supplement. Chewing gum can put you into more of a parasy uh, parasympathetic tone. Uh, and then you could laser. They, they have a uh, laser therapy on the vagus nerve. And I, we, I'm not going to go into that, but that's, uh, that's an option as well. Chiropractic is great for lowering blood pressure. Here's a study uh, that shows adjusting the atlas. By the way, if you're having some blood pressure issues, when you come and get adjust, adjusted, just let me know. I mean, getting adjusted, period, uh, can lower your blood pressure. But we may do some extra focusing on the upper part of the neck called the atlas. This study showed that the atlas vertebrae realigned uh, achieve, and achieved and achievement of arterial pressure goal in hypertensive patients. Basically, they took hypertensive patients, they get them, they adjusted the atlas, the upper part of the neck, and they showed it lowered the blood pressure 17 over 10. So that's the biggest numbers of anything that we've covered on this lecture so far. Chiropractic care lowered the blood pressure and adjustment to the atlas lowered it more than anything else. How cool is that? Chronic pain and hypertension, which is another reason why chiropractic care can help because if it gets you out of pain, your blood pressure will go down. Prevalence of clinical hypertension in patients with chronic pain compared to non-pain general medical patients. 39% of the pain group was diagnosed with clinical hypertension compared to just 21% of the medicine group. Okay, so what kind of tests do you need to find out what's the cause of high blood pressure. Well, um, again, you have, I'm going to, if you click that button for the PowerPoints, you'll have this. So you can kind of talk to your doctor about it. Most of the time, your doctor doesn't take these tests. For example, the first one there, uh, apolipoprotein B versus apolipoprotein A and TRGs, that's for cholesterol. So a lot of medical doctors just take your cholesterol, they see your overall cholesterol is high, and they're going to give you a cholesterol medication to lower it. But with Dr. Wolfson and his team does is, is overall cholesterol doesn't really matter. It shouldn't even matter at all. What really matters is your ApoB over your ApoA. And if you're not even testing that, then you don't know, right? So if you test that and you see the ApoA, ApoB over ApoA, that ratio is off, then you want to start tweaking and changing some things to be able to get your cholesterol back in in line. So anyway, again, we're going to actually have an entire workshop just on cholesterol and getting that back into uh, natural levels as well. But uh, all of these are different types of tests that you can go over with your doctor. But I highly recommend reaching out to Dr. Wolfson and his team because they can do even telehealth visits. They can do these, these type of testings where they mail you, you know, something where they get a urine sample or a saliva sample or whatever it is, they can mail that to you and you just do it and mail it back and they can get you a lot of the answers that you're looking for. Uh, ultimate longevity tests, here are some of those as well. Uh, we don't need to go into all the tests, but, but there they are. You have them in the notes there. 
Uh, so Dr. Wolfson works with a lot of different coaches. So if you give him a call, or you check it out at the drwolfsons.com, his health coaches can help you to get things under control naturally. It's always good to have a health coach and hopefully uh, you'll learn some, a lot of stuff from this lecture, but you can also reach out to some of them if you have some more, more sensitive issues. What if my doctor gets upset or won't let me stop my blood pressure drug? Okay, so I get this a lot when people are coming in and like, I want to get off my blood pressure drug, but my doctor will not let me. And I just have to tell them, look, you, you know, you kind of just have to have the conversation with the doc and be like, look, you're either going to help me with this or I may have to find a new doctor. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you on that. That's, there's no way around it. Um, evidence-based hypertension supplements. These are some of the supplements and most of these are on Dr. Wolfson's website, but they help with, with high blood pressure. Heartbeat, basically that's a beet powder. And it, and when you take a beet powder, you just mix it in water. Beets have a lot of nitrous oxide in them. So it gets nitrous, nitrous oxide in your body, helps your veins vasodilate, that lowers your blood pressure. He has another supplement called Vessel Support, Potassium Boost, Magnesium 5, Cardio Q, Garlic Force, Omega DHA, Super C. All those are great for high blood pressure. But um, And then there's a nitrous oxide test strip, which you can actually get so you can test your levels of nitrous oxide. But here's... Um, how beet juice lowers blood pressure. People who drink beet juice showed a lower uh, lowering of blood pressure eight over five. So uh, a really big improvement when they started drinking beet juice. Um, oxidative stress, inflammation, endothelial function, cognitive function, antiplatelet, uh, parasympathetic tone, all those things from beet juice. This is the supplement that comes that Dr. Wolfson promotes. Again, it's just a beet powder. You mix it with water and you drink it and it gets that nitrous oxide in your body. It's good stuff. Uh, he has vessel support, which I highly recommend. And it is a bunch of amino acids, L-arginine, uh, at high doses, works to help Im improve blood pressure. Uh, when it's combined with um, L-arginine, I mean, uh, L-citrulline, then it works even better, uh, which in this study that actually showed that, all right? Toluene is another one that's in his supplements that is an amino acid. Vascular relaxation through the modulation of endothelium-derived nitrous oxide. So toluene is an amino acid that helps uh, with nitrous oxide. The sun, again, we covered this. The sun converts nitrates in your skin to nitrous oxide. So it literally will lower your blood pressure when you get out in the sun. It also helps your body convert um, 7-DHC to vitamin D, and that helps uh, as well. Magnesium is a great one to help lower blood pressure. Effects of magnesium supplementation on blood pressure, um, the, it, it works, all right? Potassium is another good one. Potassium supplements, according to this study right here, potassium supplementation for uh, management of primary hypertension in adults, uh, just supplementing potassium lowered blood pressure 11 over 5. And then again, back to garlic. I think garlic's great because garlic is not only something that lowers your blood pressure, but it does a lot of other things. Like it helps with your cholesterol, reduces plaque formation, inhibits platelet aggregation. So that's why people take an aspirin a day is that's to inhibit platelet, platelet aggregation to make their blood thinner, right? Well, garlic helps help in a healthy way, keep your bodies from uh, keep your uh, blood cells from aggregating. Increases uh, fibrolytic activity, lowers blood sugar, uh, is anti-cancer, antimicrobial. It's an antifungal, antimicrobial, and um, antiviral as well, garlic is. So anytime I feel sick, I'm starting to feel bad, I actually take a gar what I call a garlic shot, and I cut a lemon in half, squeeze that half a lemon in a, in a shot glass, because what are lemons full of? Vitamin C, right? Um, and then I take a clove of garlic, mince that up and put it in that shot. So I'm shooting half a lemon and a couple cloves of garlic. And oh my goodness, it just wipes out whatever you have. It's, it's a great for boosting the immune system. Uh, anyway, garlic, extremely healthy. Recommend you sub, either supplement with garlic or actually you know, put a lot of the real stuff in your food. Coenzyme Q Q10, absolutely anybody with cardiac issues needs to be on coenzyme Q10. Great for the heart. Um, vitamin C, effects of vitamin C, vitamin E supplementation on the heart and uh, cardiovascular system. Those things are good. Here's the blood pressure pack that Dr. Wolfson actually recommends. So if you do have high blood pressure, I would highly recommend you go to his website, the Dr. Wolfson's, um, the doctorswolfson.com and uh, definitely check these four supplements out, heartbeat, 
vessel support, um, Magni 5, and the potassium boost. And I guarantee it's going to help a lot. Now, if you, if you are on a medication, you might want to reach out to Dr. Wolfson and his team uh, to get their recommendations on how, supplement, how some of these supplements might affect you. Um, all right, but that's his blood pressure protocol. And that's what I have for you tonight. I hope that was helpful and uh, hope you learned something there. If you want to get your spine and nervous system checked, which I highly recommend, again, we looked through this entire program. The one thing that could lower your blood pressure more than anything else was a chiropractic adjustment. So if you or a loved one uh, would like to get their spine and nervous system checked, we're giving a big discount uh, instead of our normal uh, I think it's $250 exam, which includes all your x-rays. It's only $117 if you let us know that you uh, were on one of our workshops. All right. Our phone number is 281-664-2250. Website is purelifefamilywellness.com. And I'm going to go ahead and put one uh, put that up where you can check out our website if you want to. That should pop up there. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint presentation there, but I will have post that inside the private group, which again, if you want to be on our Facebook group, just go to Facebook, search a better way community. And when you search a better way community and you click on it, there'll be a little blue button there that says join, click to join, and then I will add you. All right. Cool. 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 Anybody, uh, if you don't have any questions, then I'm going to call that a night and a workshop. And again, hope that was helpful. And, and if you do have questions later that you think up, uh, just let me know, post it inside the Facebook group or come on in for your adjustment and let me know when you come in. All right. All right. Thanks everybody. I appreciate you and have a great night.